And now, please welcome Dr. Philip Rodionov. How can we know what God is like? There's a lot of different ideas about God, many different philosophies, many different religions, and as you can imagine, many different views. So how can we, as humans, as finite beings, have an idea of what God is like? Is it something that we as people, as we as mortal humans, can actually discover for ourselves? Or is there some sort of other way that perhaps God needs to reveal himself so that we can actually have an understanding of what God is like? These are fairly important questions. But the good news is that we can know about God. In fact, God has revealed himself to us. We just need to look at Scripture itself, and there are some very powerful statements about how we can know God. And I think, first of all, of the passage in Psalm chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. What this passage is saying is that if we simply have a look around nature, if we have a look at the heavens, if we look at the created order, then we can see there that there's something which is very strongly pointing towards a higher being or a power that is God. Now, this is something that people who have looked at it completely objectively have come to that conclusion. Uh, you may have heard the story of um, Professor Anthony Flew, who was an avowed atheist. He debated against believers, but then he changed his mind. And why? The reason was that as he looked at the intricacies of nature and of the design, he came to the conclusion it couldn't have just happened. There must have been a creator God behind it all. And in particular, it was as he looked at the intricacies of DNA, Within the cell, each one of us has in each one of our cells, he came to that conclusion. So it's just an example of how as we look at the handiwork of God in the heavens and in nature, we can see that he has actually revealed himself. Um, the book of Romans also points to this where it says in chapter 1 verse 20, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Again, the same idea that as we look at what is around us and the order within creation, it points to the fact that God is there and what he was like. But there's more. As we look at scripture, there's other ways that God has revealed himself to us. We look at Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, where it tells us that God at various times and different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, but he has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Now notice how God spoke to us in the past. It says there, by the fathers and the prophets. So people who had gone before, there were many prophets recorded in the Old Testament that were sent to speak messages from God to reveal him. But then, what was the ultimate? The ultimate was through his son. And who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the ultimate revelation of God to the world. And Jesus understood this when he said this about himself in several passages. If we look at John chapter 5, verse 39, it says, These, and he's talking about the scriptures, are they which testify about me. So Jesus is speaking about himself. And similarly, in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, he said, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them, that was his followers, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So Jesus clearly understood that the Holy Scriptures, and here we're talking about the Old Testament because that was what was written there, he looked forward, he rather pointed to those Scriptures because they were the things that he knew testified about himself. Now, we too can look at the Old Testament Scriptures and we can look at the many prophecies in the Old Testament that point forward to the Messiah, to the coming of the Promised One. And there are many scholars who have looked at these prophecies and have found that there are more than 200 such prophecies and allusions in the Old Testament to the Messiah, to 
where he would be born, how he would live, how he would die, the nature of his ministry and his mission. And as we look at the life of Jesus Christ, many features of his life were foretold hundreds of years beforehand written there in the Old Testament. See, as we look at the Scriptures, we don't just have the Old Testament, we also have the New Testament. We have four books in the Bible which are biographies of Jesus Christ. They actually reveal him in much greater depth to us. They record the words of Jesus. And then we have the words of the various apostles, the other writers of the New Testament, who had an encounter with Jesus Christ. They knew him. They spoke about the experience they had with him that they had had firsthand. So there is much that we can know about Jesus Christ that has been revealed to us. We know what he did for us, the fact that we were separated from God, but Jesus, because of his great love, reconciled us, that we can have a glorious future, that we can know God, that we can have eternity with him. And how is it that we can know? We can know because of what has been revealed through Jesus Christ. By knowing Jesus Christ... We know the Father, and He is revealed to us. To help you understand God's Word in a whole new way, go to goodnewsunlimited.com. You can sign up there to get your free devotional delivered to you each day. been paid for by the partners and friends of Good News Unlimited. Word spreads fast.